Hey there, thank you so much for listening to Something Super Spiritual. My name is Jeffrey Peck, and I am a psychic medium. If you are seeking conversation with loved ones on the other side, or discussion about spirituality, life after life, and anything in between, join me as we discuss all things spirit. We are collectively experiencing a spiritual awakening right now and recognizing that we are much, much more than we once believed. We don't die and life doesn't end. We are eternal spiritual beings living in this crazy 3D virtual world of existence. Let's talk about it. Hi, Darren. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? Good. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm fine. I'm just trying to work out what the noise in the room was, but then I found the cat under the bed. Oh, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm good. I'm good. Very well. Well, it's good to see you again. Thank you Thank for you being likewise. here. Thank you. How have yeah. you been? Good, really good. Good, um, good. Lots of progress. Good. Lots of progress Excellent. since I last saw you. Yeah. Positive. Really and positive. it feels, yeah, it feels fantastic. It feels like a, a big shift has happened on my insides. Okay. And the, like, me doing me unapologetically. It takes a while to get to that place, doesn't it? I think because oh, I think it, we're already conditioned to worry what people think of us, and and you know that's difficult to move beyond. Completely, yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot. I it's it's probably one of the biggest challenges I've had in this work. You know, yeah, it's yeah. you know that internal work within yourself coming through all of that. You know, self worth yeah. Yeah. and self love and value and I mean all that yeah. stuff mm -hmm. yeah and I don't think there's ever a place that we get to where that stops right I think that's until the day we move on mm -hmm. and probably even beyond there's still an evaluation and an evolution process going on so I don't think we're ever I always joke so I always say I'm going to write a book that's called that where's there because everybody says I'll be fine when I get there yeah. I'm like what does this magical there look like what does it feel like you know so I, I think that's on topic. I am so glad that you said that because that's one of my questions with you. Well, Darren Britton, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Something Super Spiritual, the podcast. I'm so honored to have you here and it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for inviting me. Always a pleasure. So we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, and and I, I, I usually like to have you guys explain your origin story, like how how where you came from to where you are today. Yeah. However, going too deep into that, we really don't need to because I want to talk about your book <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> from, from Innocence to Inner Sense. It's absolutely fabulous. It is actually at the top of my list of mediumship books, development books. The fact that you put in like it's almost like a, a how to manual for mediums opening up, unfolding and newly developing into their mm -hmm spiritual awareness and there's mediumship gifts so so okay having said that talk a little bit about your childhood were were you open to spirit in the crib have you experienced this your no, whole life no not at all i think most most mediums most mediums when you talk to them they always talk about having played with spirit children as child as a child themselves and yes. having an awareness from a very young age never Literally never. I think my awareness really started from being 14 when I started to experience really bad headaches. And it took a long time to get those headaches under control with medication, but I was left with this ability to still see lights. Now, one of the components of migraine headaches, for those of you that are listening that know about this, is that there's sometimes a visual disturbance that's a, a bit of a precursor to the headache. So I would, you know, have like a flashing light that would occur before the headache began. But even after we managed to control the, the headaches, I was still, when I was sat at school, looking at people and seeing moving lights around people, different lights to the lights that accompanied the headache. But, but nonetheless, I would look at people and would see a glow around them or would see a form around them, a shape around them. And these forms and shapes had colors. And if I focused on those colors, I would get an intuitive what I now know is an intuitive awareness of what was kind of going on within that person. So I might detect a mood or I might detect a pain or I might detect a, a feeling. So I guess over, over a period of time, between about 14 to, to, I guess, 17, when I first went into a spiritualist church, that's the only time I ever really experienced anything other than my five physical senses. Prior to that, 
never saw the spirit world, was never woken up by voices, never had anything that suggested I was remotely psychic at all. Wow. That was that was it. I was kind of, yeah, kind of, I always say that my soul woke up, that the headaches seemed to be significant in my awakening to some degree. Yeah. And it, I don't think it's uncommon. I think there are a lot of people whose awareness of the other world starts to open up after some kind of trauma, whether that be illness, death, grief, or even people that have experienced healing themselves for whatever reason, it somehow opens the soul up yes. to something other. Totally. I agree. Mm. So in seeing auras and these lights, did you experience that with your physical eyeballs objectively, or was it more well, of an inner eye? At the time, I think I thought, I think I thought it was <laughs> a physical thing. But obviously now I understand that the auric field is not physical, you know, so so I won't be seeing it with my physical eyes because it is an energy, it's not, it's not got physical form. But my perception of it was that it was so tangible and solid and real. Yeah. And I, I now know through my you know, kind of understanding of, of the process more is that what really happens is that we identify with that part of us to such a degree that it has a reality to it and it starts to become as real as the physical world is, but it is not physical. So, so I think that's, that was my experience of it. And even now I don't walk around seeing energy and auras, but I can move myself into that place of being aware of it, yeah. but it wasn't just a visual thing. There were feelings that were accompanying it. I, I would be in the presence of somebody and I would start to feel a certain way. And, and of course, now I understand that I'm sharing that same energetic space and I start to get a glimpse into their reality. Yeah. Uh, but at the time it wasn't just visual. It was, it was feeling and experiential as well. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really mm. beautiful. So, so you went into a spiritual, spiritual spiritualist church when you were seventeen, mm. and so you've been doing this work for over thirty years, isn't that right? Yeah, it was the was, er, yeah. Er, like early nineties. Don't say that too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I have. I think I, I think it's thirty-one years this year since I started to be aware of the spirit world. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. When you recognized what was happening within yourself. And you you touched on that that's the spiritual senses the the mediumship the the people in spirit the unseen world through this spiritualist church. Was your next step? Did you did you find a teacher? Did you in, did you consciously in were you in search of a teacher or did it just like did did somebody just show up for you? Yeah, it was exactly that, and I think it's very. In a way, I like that it happened the way that it did, you know, as a tutor now, when I see students kind of moving from tutor to tutor to tutor, I think that sometimes there can be a, because I think the minute we start to see tutors in our mediumship, we change the naturalness of it. And I never really had anything to interrupt the naturalness of my involvement. It just yeah. started to be. So I would sit in what's called an open circle, which is really a group for anybody to share their awareness. And it was at times in that circle, I would hear a voice that would say, focus on this person expand your energy you know the voice would tell me so I would receive instruction in some way and then I was invited to sit in a in a home circle and I sat there for several weeks and I was actually sat in it on my 18th birthday and everybody was quite shocked like why are you not sat you know in a pub in a yeah. bar getting drunk you know you're 18 but it was exactly where I wanted and needed to be so it kind of found me I think so I certain that. people came along certain experiences came along and I would say I think everything we ever need to learn as as people show up in an experience or a person Completely. you know so I, I certainly it found me what I needed found me really yeah I love that I love that you talk about the naturalness of it because I, mm. I completely understand that from my own experiences yeah. when I consciously started to work with the mediumship at the beginning like it was so natural. I mean, it was just coming out so free flowingly and without fear and without judgment. And it was just like, it was just, it was just happening. Yeah. And, and after I'd been to Arthur Finley and I came back home and over the next couple of years, I had a couple of teachers. It started to not be so natural and I couldn't yeah. understand what was happening. And yeah. it was like pulling teeth. And it was like, it was like, like the veil being here was suddenly mm. a blackout curtain, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. and I, yeah. and I couldn't figure it out. And, and mm. it was that naturalness was gone because yeah. I was trying to conform to whoever said I needed to do it this way or that way. You know what I mean? And that's exactly why I think I've been quite privileged that I've not had those teachers, because I think you're absolutely right. I think that the mind will make the awareness conform to it. 
and rightly or wrongly, you know, as an open book, we are looking to do the best we can with our awareness. And as a student, we want to do the best that we can for the spirit world. But the downside to that really is that we start to make it conform to the tutor's idea of yes. what good evidence is or good mediumship is. And, and certainly our mediumship will always be affected by our own experience and our own expectations. And yes. all of that then starts to create a format for how the mediumistic state should function. And of course, by doing that, it then becomes a more, more about our need for what good mediumship is. And in that, we then lose the spirit world's individuality because then our communications can all sound quite similar or, or all quite formulaic. And of course, you lose the naturalness in that. So I was blessed that I never really had that. In fact, the first workshop I ever attended was 16 years down the line, and it was the very first workshop I ever taught. I'd never been to a workshop until that point. So in a way, I, when I say that the spirit world worked with me and taught me, that's really how it happened. That's so beautiful. Mm. It, it It's so beautiful. It, and I've talked with a, a few people on, on this program and who, who literally came into it however they did and then just let spirit lead the way. Yeah. without even you know thinking that they needed to get a teacher or understand this this way or that way and 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 i just find that so beautiful and and freeing almost i mean it is but i think there's also a risk in that because you remember i was 17 so i wanted to conform i wanted to fit in oh, i sure. you know this this wonderful ability had happened that gave me a sense of value Value that made me feel as that young man that I had worth and value. So, so there was a part of me that wanted to conform to the teachers. There was a part of me that wanted to be like other people that I respected and valued and looked at. But also, you know, so there's that part of me that's being spoken to by these people. Yeah. But there's another part of me that the spirit is saying, you know, grow the way we want you to grow. So I think that there were times of great conflict within me. It wasn't as wonderful and easy as I think it, it I made it sound because I think that there was lots of jealousy here I am a 17 year old boy rocking up talking yeah. to the dead when many people have been sat there for two three four years before and never received anything but desperately wanted to be a medium so I think there were challenges that were presented because of my age because of the environment because of you know um people's unhealed selves can we say yeah. so I think that it, it had its challenges it was not always easy that, you know what? You're totally reading my mind because that was my next question is what were your frustrations and challenges as you were moving through that first 16 years then? Yeah, I, I was, you know, and I'm even now, you know, I'm a very reluctant medium. When I'm in it, I love it. And this is I think I've said this before is this is how I know that mediumship is not mental. You know, people talk about it being mental mediumship. And I don't like that term because I think mediumship works really well when we lose ourselves, when our mind is absent, yes. not when our mind is present. So I don't like the term mental mediumship because it suggests that we are present. And and that is, as you know, I'm sure when it starts to get messy, yes. when we get involved. Totally. So so in terms of the challenges, I think that the the challenge for me was about being able to lose myself because I was being affirmed greatly by the work. Mm -hmm. And and yet I, I knew that it worked well when I lost Darren, when I lost my expectations and my demands, my wants, when I, when I gave that up, mediumship functioned beautifully. And I think that's, that's always the challenge. You know, I never yeah. chased being a public medium. It was never my thing. I never really wanted to do it. And so when I'm in it, I say I know that it's not mental because there are times it functions when I don't want it to, when I don't want to be a medium, when I don't want to demonstrate when I'm tired or unwell or, there's a party elsewhere or there's something going on yeah. when I don't want to do it, but it still functions and it, and it functions because I'm able to lose myself. Yeah. So that I think is the challenge because I think there's only ever two bits of us. There's only the identity of Darren or the identity of the medium or the identity of Jeff and the soul of us as well. And if we can move out of the identification with the identity of who we are and move into the power of the soul that moves beyond the mind, then it just is. We're already in the spirit world as a spiritual being. So it really, you know, the business about opening and closing chakras and moving into all these hoop jumping exercises, really, I've really since learned are kind of unnecessary. When we start to recognize that, that we already are in the spirit world, we don't need to go anywhere. We just need to silence the mind and just yeah. let it be. Then it functions without effort. But of course, I didn't know that at the beginning. Like none yeah. of us know that at the beginning. We, yeah. we we kind of lean into what other people think is right for us. It, yeah, you just said a mouthful. I mean, it, it's it's so true. The minute minute we start to think about whatever's coming through, boom, 
Yeah. You know, I've, I've just like yeah. completely dropped myself out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so speaking of that, that knowing, I, I love that you said that we are, we are, we're, we're spirit, we're spiritual being already, we're just, we're already that we don't have to go through the rigmarole of worrying about whatever chakras might be, you know, slammed shut or not, or too big or too, whatever, you know, yeah. we're already yeah. that. And it's true. I, I believe that too. I love that. Yeah. I think there's a value in putting our attention on the non-physical. And I think, you know, without dismissing the value of those thoughts or belief systems, you know, when we start to put our focus on a chakra, really what we're doing is we're giving our attention to the non-physical realm. We, we're, we're noticing the spiritual dimensions of ourself. And so I think that can act as a bit of a springboard into the recognition that we are a spiritual being. I think, And that's, I think, the value in chakras in terms of what it leads us into but is it the only way? No. You know, there are mm -hmm. times that I've sat in circles and been told you have to open every chakra and close every chakra and cover yourselves in cloak of protections. And, and you know, and, and I think that that's a very outdated, probably grounded in a religious belief system sure. rather than recognition that we're already in the spirit world. Yeah. We're already in it. We're operating on that level. And when we start to, you know, disassociate from the identity, then that level becomes reality to us conscious yeah. reality to us yeah it's beautiful it's awesome so speaking of spirit world and divinity and all that how do you experience the divine how do you experience the creator slash god slash source how what does that mean to you so I think when we when we talk about things like sitting in the power, what I believe that to be from and I'm still learning, you know, I'm not I'm not the font of all knowledge at all. But but from my experience, when I sit in the power, I'm sitting with full recognition that I am God. I am God, that God isn't separate to me, that God isn't male or female. God yes. doesn't have gender. Yes. God is a power. God is an essence. And we are all we are all that, you know? Yes. So, so for me, my experience of God in that way is sitting in the power with full conscious awareness of that. And that Darren is an element of this, but that Darren isn't really all of who I am. So I think, and I've said this again previously, that what shows up in our life is either a reflection of us or a reflection of God. So when we look at where is God, I look at what shows up in my world because the parts of myself that are requiring healing, which we all have, they're the bits of Darren that needs to look at. You know, Darren needs to heal certain things, move beyond certain things. But the good that shows up is the power of God working through us. So, so I don't look at God as separate. I, I think that there's a duality that exists. And, and I think we can choose to lean into that God force, that power. And I think Gary Zukov said it beautifully when he talked about authenticity. And he said that the purpose of life is to be authentic. And authenticity for him was about the alignment of the personality with the soul. Yes. And that to me makes complete sense because I think that there is this identity of Darren, the identity of Jeffrey, and then there is a soul of Jeffrey and the soul of Darren. And I think if we can lean into the soul that is loving, that is godly, that is divine, then and and allow it to be the driving force, the alignment of the identity and the soul, then I think we start to have a chance to change humanity because it's then about moving from the state of ego and singular into the collectiveness of being spiritual beings on this pathway. Yes. Okay. For for those for those who might not be aware, maybe they're not mediums. They're they're curious about their own spiritual self, mm. right? You mentioned sitting in the power. Would you just pre briefly explain what does what does that actually mean? So it's sitting with recognition that you are a spiritual being. That, that, that you're stepping into and sitting in from a place of conscious awareness, your spiritual identity. And I'm not necessarily talking about religious identity, because I think that's a that's a construct from the mind, from the earthy identity. And that really has nothing to do with spirituality as, as such. So so when we're talking about sitting in the power, we're sitting with awareness of our spiritual self. Yeah, beautiful. And. Through, throughout your decades of experience now, I, I get asked this all the time. So I love to ask this question. Okay. What do you believe happens when we die? I think we just what? exist. I mean, I and this is I'm going to be really simple because I think there I think many people like to overcomplicate this process that, you know, we go through seven levels and we, you know, there's a, a, a color assigned to every level and there's all sorts of things. I think that what happens is because remember, we're already in the spirit world. We don't go anywhere. 
we don't go anywhere the body drops away and then what's revealed is that we are in that dimension in a conscious way so i think that what happens is we go to the other world in a i say the other world in the sense of we are revealed into our naturalness and i think what happens in that natural state of being is we resonate with other loved ones who are also on that vibrational state of being and that reunion exists exists and happens and i think that we go through a process of review I think we go through a process of review where we don't only just review our own experience as Darren, as Jeff. I think that we also get to experience how we behaved and what we did and the impact of that on the others in life that we've touched. So I think we have the opportunity to experience what was our legacy and what did we do and what how did we do with that? I don't think it's ever that there's a place of judgment that we go to where there is a deity or a being that's saying you did right and you did wrong. Certainly my experience of the other world has never been from a place of judgment. Right. But I think that the judgment, if there is any, is not an external thing. I think it's a process of this is what you caused other people to feel. This is what you did for humanity. This is what you did to elevate people. And I think that that place of review is within us. I don't think it's an external thing at all. I think it's more about what we are left experiencing because i think that when we pass we're revealed into that connectedness with each other yeah. the same power that runs through me is the same power that runs through everybody so yeah. i think if we can remove the identity that blocks our awareness of that then all we're revealed or revealed to us is that place of connection where we have knowing and understanding about the impact we had on others yeah so i think that process goes on and then we move beyond the point sometimes where Darren exists because the identity of Darren is a construct. And so I think as a spiritual being, we evolve and sometimes we evolve and retain the identity that we held. And sometimes we move into the spiritual self of who we truly are and let go of the identity. So I think it's a, it's a nonstop journey. Yeah. And, and what's your, what is your view on reincarnation then? Another question I get yeah. asked all the time. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt that it exists. I think that there are, you know, as a spiritual being, this is not just taking the form of Darren. You know, right. I think that we are as a spiritual being eons old, and I'm talking about age in a very linear way. And of course, it isn't linear. But I think right. that from a spiritual perspective, if that soul is on a process of evolution, it may need to draw to it certain experiences to help it evolve. And some of those experiences may only be available to somebody, for example, that is disabled or that has illness or that is gay or bisexual or you know a, a certain ethnicity or a certain culture so i think the soul draws to it the experiences that it needs to evolve and that process is ongoing yeah yeah i yeah. agree and you mentioned earlier i love the way you stated it it was the 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 power that runs through me runs through everybody else and having said that, with respect to the spiritual senses and, and opening up to spirit, do you find that mediumship development is a gift to a few, a talented few, or is it something that anybody can access within themselves? I honestly think the gift is what you do with it. I, I don't think it's about being bestowed something because you're special. But I have to say to you, I think that it isn't something that is held within the potential of everybody. I think what is held within the potential of everybody is the remembering that you are a spiritual being. So when we sit in the power, yes. what we're also doing is we are teaching the mind to be silent. We're saying to the mind, just sit there, just sit there so that the soul and all that's contained within its potential can be revealed and can be expressed. And some of that potential might show up as mediumship or as healing or as trance or as physical mediumship. But it may also show up as singing, as dancing, a desire to be creative, a desire to garden. You know, so we're allowing the soul to express itself when we sit in the power. And so it isn't just about mediumship, although it's a discipline that many of us employ for our mediumistic state. But ultimately, anything that is held within the soul has the potential to elevate humanity. And that's really why sitting in the power is powerful, because it's bigger than just feeling relaxed or feeling ah. energized or getting replenished. So so sitting in the power is a wonderful uh, vehicle, if you like, to allow your soul to be heard. Now, the challenge with that is that many people believe that sitting in the power will make you mediumistic. And of course, it doesn't, because the soul may have other ideas about what it is is in the world to experience and to express. And that's where I think the challenge is, is that many people are sold this idea, this thought 
that mediumship is for everybody. And I think that their expression of what their soul wants to do may be very different to the identity and, and its desires. So I think we just have to sit and trust and allow. And, and I think that's all we can do. The truth is, I think if it was there for everybody, then there would be more mediums than there are. Yeah. There'd be more mediums than there are. So I think we have to, if we're going to do this work, then I think we have to just sit with the soul and allow it to speak and go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. And, and how do you, oh, it's another question I get often. What is your experience and what do you find with respect to spirit guides? So I think there's two things for me. This is, again, it might be controversial. So let me just kind of be controversial for a second. I love this. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. So I have no doubt that there are benevolent, loving, kind souls that are separate to us, that exist in that dimension, that are also about elevating humanity. I have no doubt of that, you know, and I think that as we talk about reincarnation, that I think as we give up the identity of Darren, we evolve into the spiritual self, we, and then start to have a value in the other world and, and work in some way. So I think that also as a spiritual being that has gone through a process of evolution, I wonder sometimes when we talk about spirit guides, that the spirit guides aren't always, I think they can be benevolent external spiritual beings, but I wonder if that when we tap into what we believe is a spirit guide is it really tapping into the memory of the soul that at some point the soul has taken on the form of the tibetan monk Ooh. the native american indian you know and i and i wonder whether that face that we see that shows up at certain times is just that we've accessed within the power of our soul and the wisdom of our soul some quality that is being embodied that we need in that moment so when people talk about you know i've got a new guide this week or i've got a new you know and there's a belief that it's an external spiritual guide i wonder whether it's not about it being an external spiritual guide i wonder if it's just that they're moving into the levels of themselves and the parts of themselves are being revealed another aspect of themselves within their soul yeah 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 so I think both things are true. I'm not I'm not saying there's one yeah. or the other, but I think both things are true. I think we have to question as a soul, if we're looking at spirit guides, we have to question that if as a spiritual being, we move beyond identity, why are spirit guides coming back with identities? What's that about? And who's that about? Which I think is a bigger question, because many people ask in sit-ins, I've had this so many times, who is my spirit guide? Yes. And they want an identity. Yes. And so as a highly evolved spiritual being, what's the need for them to come back and say, I am, I did this or I lived here. What's that about and who's that about? So I, I always question that. that. And that might just be where my current level of understanding is. But I think we have to look for the evidential quality yes. in what we receive always, yes. uh, but also include in our fact finding, could this be a part of my soul expressing itself as a memory? Okay. I like that. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a really great new perspective that I hadn't even thought about, but yet something about it actually makes sense. Mm. I mean, it really makes sense. And, yeah. and, and I say that because, so where, where I'm drawing this from my own personal experience, I had a lady come to me for a reading and she was in the absolute throes of grief. She had lost her husband maybe a month or two previously. And just like, it was fresh, right? Mm. But the grief felt bigger than just normal grief. So mm. at the beginning, she explained to me that she had seen a medium two weeks before. And the medium told her that she couldn't connect with her husband because her husband had already reincarnated. And she okay. was devastated. She was devastated. Mm. Mm. And... The way I see the soul being multidimensional as it is, I don't, I don't believe for a second that that aspect, that personality that she knew as her husband is no longer there. That's part of her soul, his soul. Like the way I see it is like the soul is like a hard drive and in each life we live is like a file within that hard drive. Mm -hmm. And when we choose to come back, a portion of our soul comes to experience whatever we need to experience, but that aspect of our soul 
that life that we knew as Jeff or her husband in that moment, he's still there. He's still with her. He's not going anywhere. And so you having said, you know, could the spirit guides be another aspect of ourselves within our soul makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it goes to show that there's a, there has to be a level of responsibility. And this is why I think, you know, with, with mediumship is that many people work to develop mediumship or to kind of learn how to give a message or to get certain pieces of evidence. But, but there's a, there's an absence sometimes of leaning into what is their spiritual understanding of themselves or the process. Right. And I think that's the bit that's not taught so well. And yet that's the bit that is, if not taught well or understood well, can be quite damaging because, you know, you're oh. you're saying to somebody, your loved one whom you've adored for 50 years, you can never see and speak to again. And that can be profoundly hurtful. So oh my I gosh. think that with, with awareness, that has to be then a responsibility that comes with that. So I think many people look to develop mediumship, but they don't look to, cult to cultivate, first of all, an empathy and, and a sense of responsibility, but also to understand the process a little more. And, and I think a big part of that is that there's sometimes a reluctance to looking within. It's all out there. It's all the, the external spirit world guides, the external spirit world. It's the external evidence. But but we're always the filter through which our awareness functions. So, again, focus on you. What is it about you? Because ultimately, what shows up in your mediumship will be a reflection of the spirit communicator or a reflection of you. And if there are unhealed parts of ourselves that are going to come to the surface, which they will in our mediumship, um, then I think it's important we need to understand what, what bits are still alive within us and need attention. Because if we don't, then we're kind of potentially harming rather than helping. Yeah. Oh, and she was so hurt. I mean, my heart just like yeah. rumbled for her, you know? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. What you just said about, about, you know, <laughs> that additional layer of, of understanding is just, it's, it's enormous and, yeah. and so important. It's so important. Yeah. yeah. And, and I also think too, that like a lot of that how do I say this? Because I don't, I don't want to misspeak. I don't, I don't know that a, we can teach. We can teach that. We can teach that all day long. But I think a lot of that is really experiential. It's experiential within sitting with our soul and letting that understanding and awareness kind of like ooze into us, you know, and, and there's, mm. there comes this, this like these little aha moments within mm. that, you know, those, those periods yeah. of sitting with, within yourself. And I think that's also the other benefit to sitting in the power is, in, and also the minute we call love into our life or God into our life, we're actually inviting it to show the parts of ourselves that require healing. And I think also, you know, be careful when we say, I want to know what love is, because you will be faced with the unhealed parts of yourself. <laughs> And, and, you know, people say this all the time, you know, and certainly I've heard this in the spiritual arena when they, when, you know, you hear people at the college and various places go, oh, I met somebody and I just felt like I knew them, I've knew them all their life. Run the other way when that happens, because people have this belief that when those feelings strike, it's a spiritual connection, it's my twin flame. You know what? It's not. There's a recognition of your wounds in somebody else. And this mm. person that's showing up in your experience is beautifully dovetailed beautifully dovetailed with the parts of you that require healing. So let's start looking at it from that perspective, rather than collapsing ourselves into this twin flame romantic belief system, is because again, what shows up in your life is a reflection of you or a reflection of God. So let's start looking at what does that have to tell us about ourselves? Oh, and that's Darren, the bit that moves wow. People. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, I just had chili bumps all over the place. Okay, can you say that part again? That's that's big. That's a that's a really <laughs> run the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so it's it when you feel you know you're you're going you're you're going into your story that this twin flame and this is the love of my life and I'm going to live happily ever yeah. after. Yes. Yeah. Say what you yeah. said again. And and one of the things that people do is oh, I've met my soulmate. No, no, you may not. You know, you may not. You may have actually met your psychological wound. You may have just met that part of you in somebody else that has been hidden from your conscious mind for a while. And somebody has just reflected that right back at you. So let's I'm not saying run away. I mean, I'm joking about that, but I'm saying let's be including that as a possibility. Let's include that. That's what's showing up as a possibility, because really, as a sitting in the power, identifying with our spiritual self, 
evolving, growing, you know, moving into who we really truly are, we are going to face parts of ourselves that are unhealed and in pain. We can't bypass that. Well, we can. We can do all sorts of things to try and bypass that. But ultimately, if we're on this spiritual pathway of evolution, let's look at what is life trying to teach us, what is life trying to show to us. And of course, reflections are always there. So when you meet somebody who absolutely feels like you've known them all your life, you feel like this is my soulmate. We've known each other from after 10 minutes of meeting. I just can feel like this person knows me inside out. You are being faced with the un unhealed parts of yourself. Notice that. Whew. You said a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Hmm. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still, I'm still like <laughs> processing that. That was so beautifully stated. Wow. Okay. So look, what next? Um, Holy cow. With respect to your daily life, you had mentioned earlier about, you know, shifting your awareness and, and t seeing energy w around people, yeah. maybe forms, whatever. This is another question that I get often when you're walking around town when you're in an old hotel when you're in an old, a place with a lot of history do you feel and sense quote ghosts I, I mean I don't love that word but I'm just saying it as that you know it's kind of the thing now out there with the whole paranormal yeah. world but yeah. yeah what's your experience like that in just regular life I'm really not bothered I mean let's be honest I, you know if I'm going to go to work because I, I work three days a week in an optometrist's office as well as doing mediumship and teaching and various things so you know when I'm kind of wearing the hat of working in the optometrist office that I'm there for that you know I yeah. I can move my awareness out of that place of mediumistic awareness and there are times when you know working very closely to people I think that if you are interested in people and have a connect a, a reasonable level of connectedness to your emotional self you know i think that we all have an ability to have a sense of what's going on you know we can read people whether we yeah. call it intuition or gut in whatever we call it but i think if you are reasonably in touch with your emotional self and you're interested in people i think that we can feel things about them without question but in terms of whether you act on that i think that's down to this responsibility we spoke about before so it's a little bit like you know you're going to the supermarket to buy bananas you might pass the peaches, the grapes and the pears on the way. You don't have to engage with those fruits. You can just go there to get your bananas and leave. Yeah. So I think ultimately there are always energies present, different energies, because, of course, the world is filled with people and emotions and pain and stories. And, yes. and, and, and they are held within the atmosphere. You know, we move in and out of those things constantly. But do I walk in and out of those atmospheres wanting to feel them? Not at all. I, I really am not interested. So when I'm in a dynamic where I'm required to be aware of my awareness and I'm required to express it, then I absolutely will allow that. But when I'm not, I'm really not interested. Yeah. I'm really able to move in and out of those places. Agreed. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of the soul earlier, what's your feeling on soul contracts? Pre-birth planning, planning this trip around, you know, in this meat bag. <laughs> what's your, what's your, what's your yeah. thoughts on that? I guess, see, this is where I think I, I think a little bit more broadly, because I think there is this belief that there are soulmates, you know, there is. And, and in that there is that belief that there is a, a one person that makes everything better or a one person that makes, the, you know, your experience of being a soul, you know, kind of the most whole that it can be. But I, I think everybody that comes into our experience is there on some level by design. And whether that is that psychologically we're drawn somebody to us because they mirror our wounds or that energetically we draw somebody to us because there's a desire for them to help and it dovetails our need perfectly or that there is a on a soul level a vibrational alignment that is about the sharing of space together for a period of time or or you know so I, whether i'd want to give that the name of a soul contract i don't know i think that we are calling to us at any time um experiences that are necessary for our growth and that's not to say that we are, you know, kind of deserving of bad things that happen to us or deserving of pain in some respects. But I think that the identity looks at experience is very different to the soul and how it looks at experiences. So in terms of I, I think that everybody that comes into our life, you know, my friend used to say there is not one time that a waitress didn't shout at you or give you bad service that you didn't need it on some level. And I think there's an absolute truth in that. I think that the question is not about what they did wrong. 
but how does that make me feel about me and what can that tell me about what's still alive within me and i think that's the bit we don't ask of ourselves mm-hmm. we as humans become very fixated on what was done to me and we we don't ask that follow up question of okay and it makes me feel xyz about me that's the bit that i think helps us to move beyond the place of being the victim or the yes. the hurt third party and it start to move us into a realm of helping us to understand ourselves by asking those questions so yeah so in terms of soul contracts i think everybody that shows up in our experience is necessary and has a value if only to reflect parts of ourselves back to us and where does grace fall into all of this well i think that we're not here to i think we're here to remember who we are i think that's the thing i I think there's a there's a belief that you know there's a good bad right wrong to our our behavior and and i think that everything that shows up in our life is designed to take us higher and that's where grace shows up because i think that everything however painful difficult traumatic or joyful has designed to take us to a greater understanding of ourself our true self and i think that that is divine it is divine. It is divine. Um, what is your take on on pets? I have a dog uh, and a cat. <laughs> and 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 you know, I, I, I uh, some people, yeah. some people, I've heard, you know, in the last four years, there are some people that say that you know, pets do not have souls and they don't go where we go, and it it you know, it's very rattling to most people mm-hmm. they, i can't even like wrap my brain around that mindset but wh- wh- where are you with respect to ant pets and souls and their absolutely their consciousness yes. they're part of the same consciousness that we are they may have limited language expression because their brains are not formed in the way that humans are they can't speak in the way that we do we don't, they don't have probably the same level of cognition or range of emotions that we do but they are consciousness and i think that you know when you are in the presence of any animal, you know, if, for example, you raise your voice at an animal, there is a sense of, you know, response that comes from that, that tells us that they are sentient beings, you know, any dog that gets shouted at, you know, and they lower their eyes and they look at you and, you know, there's a sense of understanding, of recognition. And and I think that why wouldn't that survive? Why wouldn't right. consciousness survive? Consciousness in every form survives just because there's a limitation of language, which is really about physicality and not about soul, then it makes sense to me that they would, of course. Well, yeah, it is physicality. I mean, their little tongues don't have as many muscles as ours do. So, they, yeah. they, you yeah. know, the dog's tongue just flaps out. It can't force absolutely. sentences. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I also think it is very possible for animals to communicate on some level. You know, I have a-, a Talk about uh, that. Yeah, I was just going to say that too. Talk about that, please. People yeah. love this. And I have a friend that, that you know she 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 is able to communicate with 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 animals and and I think that again, however her awareness functions is that it she receives information through pic, pictorial form, visual form, and that tells a story. And I think that that to me makes sense because there are no limitations. There may be physical limitations, language limitations, cognition limitations, but in terms of the energetic connections we make. There's no limitation. So it makes sense that information can be transferred and, you know, kind of understood and interpreted. Yeah. Now, I think that, that there, there still has to be an evidential quality to that, yes. you know, and, and I think that we should always be very, you know, looking for that, searching for that, not tolerating less than that as mediums or as animal communicators. But I think that there is an evidential quality that if that can be demonstrated, then I think we should start to invest in that as a as a as a as an experience but not unless there is an evidential quality that has that has to be present yeah yeah oh i so agree how has mediumship changed you oh i i i guess want to go more than that more than just mediumship this spiritual awareness you know mediumship is kind of just it's like a a little a piece within the spiritual awareness so how has this spiritual aware awareness changed you i think the bit that i'm at in 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 this place in my understanding is that i understand i am an identity of darren that's mixed with all my kind of beliefs and thoughts and fears and ego and all those things which make me human and i also have an absolute understanding and experience that i am a spiritual being as well i'm not quite at the part that we spoke about with gary zuckoff where there is an alignment of the two and that one is very much the kind of the leading force I, i certainly live in both of those two worlds so i think for me my pathway feels to be at the minute really about how do I integrate those two elements of the self 
And I never had that understanding at the beginning. It was all about mediumship, talking to the dead, giving evidence, proving myself as a 17 year old. And that was very much, you know, kind of the motivation, I think, a lot of the time. Sure. Now, with age, you know, like you said, 31 years down the line, it's not about proving self anymore because that's made way to accepting who I am much more than I ever did. So so the drivers are different now than they ever were. So it becomes more about who am I spiritually rather than who am I in my identity. So I guess that's that's what's changed me. But but has it changed me or is it just that I've kind of some part of me has woken up more, you know, is that the mind's not needing to be in control as much. I don't need to have its validation as much as I once did. Right. And, and and I can lose myself in that way. So I think that's the change is I've I've moved away from proving self and even proving the spirit world because ultimately people will believe if they want to and they won't if they don't. And that's none of my business. That's yeah. that's between them and their God. But it's I think what matters to me most as I'm evolving is that who am I as a spiritual being? I, I want to ex- I don't want to go off the planet without understanding who I am in every level of my being and and whatever form, whatever I can do to experience that, to know that is what I'm willing to do. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Beautifully said. And, and and what kind of what kind of advice would you have for those listening and or watching right now? What what sort of advice would you have for them as they are in their own path of understanding and the curiosity of their own spiritual senses? Many people have been caught up with you know dogma of a religion or society's expectations and demands or culture. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. so what is your advice for people out there who are listening? <laughs> So again, I'll, I'll pop a few balloons, if I may. Please um, do. I would say to anybody to move away from the external form of religion, not just spiritualism, because I think there's something about when we start to identify with a religious belief system, we start to move away from the spiritual dimensions of the self. It starts to conform to what the religion dictates, what the teacher dictates, what what we're told should be, you know. So our awareness then and our closeness, you know, how close we go to the spiritual self then becomes slightly diminished because we start to identify with the external authority. So I would say move away from the external authority of religion and even of teachers. You know, I think this is why, you know, looking back years gone by with mediumship and unfoldment of mediumship, it was much more wonderful and authentic and powerful and honest because they just sat with the spirit world there was no kind of do this exercise there was no open your chakra there was no you know there was none of that kind of making it conform so i would say to people if you need to find a teacher time find a teacher of mediumship that just creates the space for you to be vulnerable for you to feel safe and to you to trust the people that you're sat with and let the spirit world teach you. Just find a teacher that creates the environment that's supportive of the experience, that doesn't do the teaching, that just creates the space. And I think if we can start to find teachers that do that, rather than teachers that just give out lots of exercises that don't actually help you understand yourself, then I think we have a chance of starting to create mediums that are much more authentic, but whole beings as well rather than splinting running off parts of themselves and becoming a different identity when they're in the mediumistic state compared to when they're not so that's what i would say that's wow. what i would say in terms of what i think would make a difference darren you're amazing no, you know, thank you but you know you, you i think this is the thing you know you must be as amazing as you think i am otherwise you wouldn't recognize it I've, i i agree is... i've said that too i'm amazing too <laughs> <laughs> but but there is a, there is an element of we recognize and resonate with people who are on our vibrational wavelength, you know, mm-hmm. without question. So I think when when people say those things and, and I'm grateful, I'm not, I don't want to diminish that. And thank you for saying that. But I also want to recognize that if you weren't there yourself, you wouldn't recognize that. And I think that's where I learn is that what's showing up in my life, what people say, what people do in my experience are revealing something not only about, you know, you as the person that shows up but also what is that reflecting back at me so everything that shows up has got something to teach us and i think that's really important that we start looking at that and we start to recognize the spiritual flow of life yeah. and looking at it from a spiritual perspective rather than looking at it from a 
a, an identification with form, you know, with belief system, exp you know, and all those things. So, so thank you for that. But, but yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. All right. You know, that, that is an absolute beautiful way, a way to, to wrap this up. Would you please tell everybody where they can find you? And if mm. you have, you know, any, any events, courses, classes that you'd like to tout, you know, throughout the year, let, let everybody know and social media okay. if, if you're out there with that too yeah sure i mean certainly people are always welcome to connect to me through my website which is darrenbritain.co.uk britain as in great britain but with two t's so so that's always a good place to to find kind of most up-to-date information i am on facebook people can always just again use my name just to find me and that's pretty much it really i, I have throughout the year various online demonstrations that i do or in-person demonstrations that i do as well in the year and just check the website it's it's pretty much updated regularly and people can find out stuff there awesome awesome and and when's your next book coming out oh <laughs> do you know I, I don't know it's kind of it's interesting because even when the book before the first book wasn't actually I never intended to sit and write a book that was the weird thing you know lockdown happens and you know over the period of years I've been writing a few different bits here and there about experiences that I'd had or feelings that I'd, I'd, I'd kind of encountered and it was during lockdown that the spirit world said your book is written and I thought that was crazy but actually you know, when I had all that time on my hands, I looked back and thought, oh, actually, there's stuff here that actually just by putting a few lines in and bridging a couple of things that actually became there. So I never intentionally wrote a book. It just presented itself. So in terms of the next one, I would have to intentionally write it. And that feels really big and scary. But we'll see. I I'm not ruling it out, but but we'll see. Well, I can't wait for it. Thank you. Just saying. <laughs> I'll let you All right, know. Darren, thank you so much for being here. You're oh. an absolute joy to be with, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bless you. Take care. Thank you again for listening to the Something Super Spiritual Podcast. If you know someone who would enjoy this episode, please do share it with a friend. For show notes, links, and to purchase a mediumship reading, my website is somethingsuperspiritual.com. You can also easily subscribe and follow the show on your favorite app, sign up for my newsletter for bonus content, and to keep the conversation going, you can easily join the Facebook community. It's all right there at the website, somethingsuperspiritual.com. Signing off for now, namaste. Namaste.